All right, so the next question is from Benjamin, or I'm sorry, Benjam. <laughs> he says, I followed your recommendation and purchased Jeffrey Smith's SEO bootcamp. Okay, yeah, I remember this. Remember you from last week. He says, I no longer have any questions about how to silo a website. That's right, because he's he is the man when it comes to that stuff. He says his process for writing posts is more involved compared to curated posts, though in order to create top uh, though in order to create topical depth. I was about to start with creating curated posts per content kingpin, but now I'm wondering the best way to proceed. The SEO bootcamp process uncovers the topical keywords for each silo and the questions associated with them to use in writing seven to 900 word posts. Hiring a writer to write researched and well-written articles sounds expensive. And yes, it, it, it very much is when you hired a subject matter expert to write posts. Um, it, it's, it's, it can be very expensive or even just a good writer it might not even be a subject matter expert. They might go research to be able to write good posts, but that's expensive too. That's why I use curated posts. Is there something, is this something that can still be put in the hands of a writer in the Philippines for $10 a post or is it going to cost more? Okay. So my answer to that is, you know, Jeffrey has his method. Um, I follow his on-page methods for siloing and things like that. Uh, to not, not a hundred. I don't follow all of his methods because it, it's a lot of work. Um, and we've been able to, uh, you know, some of the methods that I use, I'm able to still achieve results. So it really depends on what you want to do. I don't typically go for those longer posts. What, what I, uh, what I do is uh, curated posts. My bloggers handle all of that. That's because, I've got a couple of really good bloggers that I've trained over the years that um, do curate content curating that are really, really, really good at it. And I've taught them some SEO tactics as well so that they understand how to interlink properly, which tags to use depending on the type of silo structure we're using, all that kind of stuff. So I like to use curated posts because it's efficient, it's less expensive, it's easier for people that, you know, they don't have to research for every blog post. So it's a lot more, a uh, lot, lot less expensive. Um, so can you still use curated posts for topical depth? Yes. However, keep this in mind, you know, you can kind of make a hybrid out of the two, which is kind of what we do. Uh, you know, occasionally, not all the times, but occasionally we'll go, I'll tell my blogger to go scrape all the questions, you know, the, the, the FAQs for a particular topic, right? For, for the uh, project that we're working on. So where do you get those questions? Well, there's keyword or excuse me, question scrapers out there that uh, you can use. I know there's also, you can just go to answerthepublic.com and you can type in some keywords and it'll come back and show you commonly asked questions. You can go to Google and ask questions as if you were somebody looking for the product or service that you're blogging about, right? And ask questions as if you were inquiring about that product or service and then see what the accordion boxes are in Google search results with questions. People also ask, right? And each time you click one of the drop downs to reveal the, it'll show the question, but you to reveal the answer, which is just curated snippets of Q and A's from other websites. That's all that accordion box is. You can use those questions in your own content and a curator can still use those questions. And in fact, think about this, the questions plus the answers are right there in the accordion, uh, you know, the accordion box in, in the Google search results. And like I said, each time you click the drop down menu or the drop down arrow, it actually shows, reveals more questions and answers. And so you can scrape those and they actually give you the link to a snippet and then a link over to where that question is answered on, you know, on that particular site that there's, that they're citing, right. Uh, that they're attributing it to. So you can actually use that in your curated content guys. Think about that. So it's, it's again, it's a very easy way to start adding FAQs or questions and answers to blog posts um, that your, your, you know, your VA is publishing or whatever. And the curated, content can be right there unless it's a direct competitor which i don't ever recommend linking to a direct competitor but a lot of the times they're not direct competitors and so you can actually take the cop the question and answer right from the google search results and paste that into a, a a blog post make sure you cite the source of the answer and just like you would any other type of curated content and there you go so again you can go about it both ways um, Jeffrey Smith has his own specific method and he's very, very good at being able to rank like crazy for some really difficult terms with little to no backlinks um, because of the way that he structures and does long depth content, you know, long, well-researched, long form content for blog posts because of the volume that we do uh, that my, you know, my agency does and my bloggers do, I prefer the curated content and it reads well, it looks good and everything else. So again, it's, it's up to you how you want to do it. My method is to use silo structure, 
with the linking the, the way that I've been taught from Jeffrey Smith and from Marco, <laughs> my partner. Um, but, you know, again, I like because of the volume that we do, I just it's not really it would be too cumbersome for us to do the long form content all the time for posts and not to mention expensive as well. So it's really a preference. You can get away with doing it um, either way or create kind of a hybrid of the two. Any comments on that? So, yeah, our our keyword research gig in MGYB.co uh, is based on on the, the training that we're talking about where we go into all of the different tools that are available and we pick up as many keywords that are relevant in the niche as possible. We get as many as possible. We go into all of these tools, we go into SEMrush. You don't need uh, uh, a subscription to SEMrush or SEMrush. You don't need it for Uber Suggest. You don't need it for Answer the Public. You don't need any of these because we give it to you. These questions will also pop up in Answer the Public. We give you that and, and also the questions that are that are brought up when, when we do the SEMrush uh, research and every other research. So you get all that and you get it, 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 it like it's all categorized for you. We, we take care of all that so that you don't have to. So that it, it, when you get that back, you can hand that over to your writer and then your writer is responsible for finding the content. Now, what Bradley said makes perfect sense because you take that keyword research and you can still build the topical relevance by inserting the, the, the proper keywords in, in the way th that Jeffrey teaches it and interlink in that manner. Nothing stops a good writer from curating and adding the topical keywords, the relevant keywords and interlinking right. those. I mean, what's to stop you? I don't understand why curation has to be so difficult. It's the simplest thing in the world. You go and you find, <laughs> here, here's your list of topical keywords that you have to add to this uh, long form, 700 to 900 words. You're going to work those in and then you're going to interlink to other pages or to another page, however it is they choose to do it, the tags also. But that's the, the curator, the curator can do all that. You don't have to have, and, and I'm doing air quotes, original content. It's original because it's curated. That's and right. listen, proper attribution simply means that you're giving credit to the original source. Nothing says that you have to link to the original source of the content. Remember when, when, when you were doing proper citation and proper attribution, when you were writing a paper in college, those of us who, who went before the, the internet, right? You used to cite the source in your paper, right? And, and you do annotations you, 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 and you would cite it that way. That, that's proper and that's fine. Look at the way that Wikipedia does it. Now they do know follow it, but sometimes it's, it's not necessary. They just cite the source and you don't even have to hyperlink it. It doesn't have to be a hyperlink to be proper attribution because you're giving credit and you're not using the entire article. You're using a part of the article, maybe a paragraph, which is which in, in most cases is proper use of that paragraph because you are citing the source and giving proper attribution without having to, to add even a, a no follow link. So it depends on how you approach this. I would totally approach it, and I do. From that standpoint, when I have the keywords in, in, in that niche, and you'll find this, at, uh, I know you, a lot of you guys are new in, at this, when you start getting heavy into entities, and you start using the, the Google's natural language processor, and you start using some of the online tools like TextRaiser to refine your content, so that you get the, 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 the most relevant content on that page, well, you'll get a, a, a list of words that, that, that you can use and your writer has to be able to go in there and use those words in that content so that you're also working with the natural language processor and what Googlebot is looking for as far as entities on that page. So everything has to be related. Everything has to be relevant, not just content for the sake of content, and for the sake of keyword, it has to all make sense at both the unstructured data level, which is content, right, Writ written content, and the structured data level, which, which is the, the schema. Google wants LD plus JSON. So when all that matches, when all that matches, and then you hit that with the power that's available through our SEO power shield, the, the thing that happened, well, you saw that guy in, in, in the Facebook, in the free Facebook group. I think where he got his drive side back and he couldn't believe the result. I can't believe you guys control uh, SERPs this way. 
it's not that, that, that we control SERPs, it's that we know what the bot is looking for and we feed the bot constantly. That's it. And it doesn't have to be complicated like it's being made here. They're not mutually exclusive. Let me finish with that. So I just wanted to demonstrate what I was talking about. So I, I just went to Google one for, you know, for tree service stuff, which I do most, most a lot of. It's a, like, I just typed in a question. How much does tree removal cost, right? And so here you go. Here's questions right here. People also ask. And if I click on any one of these, you'll see that it also, it, it starts to reveal additional questions. For each time I click, it adds three, two or three more, right? And so you can go right through here. Now, if we scroll down to the bottom of the page, it's seeing my, my IP. It knows that I'm in Culpeper, Virginia. So some of these may very well be, most of these are likely not going to be competitors, but they possibly could be. But if you see right up the top here, it gives you some additional menus or, or items there. So I just clicked and add, you know, to add California. And just because again, you know, it, it doesn't matter where, where you're really located. If you're, if you're just using it for topical relevancy, then I, I could click through here and start copying some of these questions and answers, the ones that are relevant and pasting them into curated posts. Does that make sense? And cite the source. So again, it's just, it's just like you could copy this right here, just like you see it here, and then paste that into a blog post, and there you go. And then just make sure you're citing the original source. So again, that's a way you can start working those questions and answers into to posts that, that are curated, because that's a lot more, and it's very efficient. It's really up to you how you want to structure uh, your content production. I prefer the curated method just because that's what my team has been doing since really since 2000. And I don't know, I, I used to actually write the posts or curate posts myself until I realized how time consuming that was going to be. And then I basically created content Kingpin and started training virtual assistants, which it wasn't content Kingpin at the time. It was training for virtual assistants, but then we turned it into a product because uh, it worked so well. So anyways, it was a great question though. Thanks. Thanks.